Hello, I'm Mike Craddock and I'm going to show you the unboxing of the new Scuderia Reds engine and the X1 pipe and also be showing you a few tips on fitting it in the new MP10. Okay, so we're opening the new Scuderia box. It comes with a beautiful box. I love the look at this engine. It reminds me of a Ducati on-road race bike. Lovely colouring on here. Beautiful looking head, everything machined, all new, just with the, the bottom end needle and the top end needle, new design in carburettor, comes with a 7mm Venturi, so you can open that and set it where you want it, comes factory set, so the first tank run it at that. So what I do to start off with, I'll show you with the Scuderia 721, all handmade by Mario Rossi. This tells you the engine model, so 721S, uh, serial number 59805, which is matches up with the crankcase. This is basically like your logbook for your engine. All the compression was tested, it tells you the, the gap and the distance in the chamber and the clearance. And this was the date it was made on the 2nd of the 7th, 2019. So on the back here, you can mark up when you put a new bearing in it. I'd recommend putting a new uh, Conrad in it after 10 litres of fuel, just to be on the safe side. And then after 20 litres, I would change the main and front bearings. Okay, it comes with a TS3 Reds plug. Uh, they recommend that, use that all the time. Nothing else really, works really well. So what I'm going to show you is how we do the clutch for the MP10 and a few little tips on the way. So we take the screw off there. The collet on this one, I would only use with the Reds clutch. So we're not going to use that collet because it's a different angle. So the first thing I do is I put the black washer that comes in the MP10 kit. Then the collet. Slide that over. Most importantly is pull the crankshaft so that there's no end float. So that when you put the flywheel on, you're not going to get any backlash. So the pin's hitting the back plate. You don't want it hitting that and causing any problems. So a little dab of thread lock. Just on the thread, just a touch. Make sure you get your clutch nut up the right way. Mount that down. Get your clutch nut spanner. Just nip it up and then just check you've got no back play. That's perfect. There's no play at all. And with your mole grips, just gently grip it. Just a little bit tighter than that. I know it marks knurling a bit, but if you keep if you keep when you do this, keep it in the same place as the marks. And you won't badly score up your flywheel so again when you do the clutch nut up line the point of the nut with the pin and then you won't have any problems putting your clutch springs on with no special tool so you can see it's just nearly in line just a little more of a tweak a little bit more so you want it dead in line really that's perfect do that so next you put your little uh, washers on to stop your uh, clutch shoes seizing on the um, flywheel once they get a little bit burred up so this gives you the clearance and you get your clutch spring just lay that in the middle there pop that on lay the spring over there a little screwdriver just flip the spring over just pop it in check there's free movement repeat the same thing again lay on top click down flick it in the groove check the clearance repeat again in 
again. What I do then is I use two, two of the shims that come in the kit to go on top, place the bearing on. Just make sure that spins freely and you can see a nice gap there. That's what you want to see, a little bit of daylight. You don't want that rocking and that's with only one bearing. As soon as I put the two bearings on, you see there's no rocking at all and you can see a nice clearance. You don't want this hitting your clutch bell. Then I get another shim, maybe one shim or two shims. I think that looks a little bit tight, but we can check that when we do that up. So what I'm gonna go for is take that one off and go for the thicker shim. What I use here is a nice little, um, nice little M3 screw, about eight mil long. It's perfect with a washer built in. Build that on there. I'll give you the part number in a minute. I'll just get this down and check the uh, clearance. So with your 2.5 driver, just nip it up and then you can check your M flow. I reckon we could get that little shim on there. There's a bit too much M flow on there. But you need about a quarter of a millimeter, something like that for allow for expansion. So we try that again then. You don't need thread lock on there because anything on the engine with thread lock, the heat from the engine will melt the thread lock and it'll come loose. Yeah, there's not enough there, so I need to just leave it with the um, leave it with the bigger thing. As everything breaks in, you could probably put a, another shim in after that. There's not enough M flow for my liking. So in the same place where the marks were on the wheel, just nip it up. That's it, you've got your inflow there. Make sure everything spins freely. You can see that I've just taken a little bit off the engine mount because if you've got a uh, smaller gear in, like a 46, then the engine gets quite close to the rear drive shaft, so you don't want that touching, so I've just taken that away. Obviously with a 47 and a 48, you're moving that way. So once you've done that, all the needle is in the right place now. I just get my two mil driver just to check that everything's tight and the carburetor's in the right position, which is nearly straight, just off of straight. You just want it a little bit in that angle of the flow. So I hold the carb down and just nip the screw up. So when you feel it tight, just put a quarter of a turn on it. You don't want to really clamp it up and break anything. So with the um, the ball joint, what I do with this is I take this off, the set screw, and I get a little button, two mil, it's an M3 screw with a two mil driver, hex. Put that on the driver, it's easier. And I can show you what angle it's the right height for the uh, MP10 mounting so that you get a, a level a level flow of opening. So what I do is I, I point it up to, so it's just where this silver part is here. I just, the silver part of the clamp bolt on the carburetor, it's just about there. And that's your right height. And I just nip that up gently like you would with a grub screw and then a little tip for you here, I've made a, this is a carburetor return spring that I call it. It's just a sidewall off a tire and it's actually a, um, a rasp AKA tire. So what I do there is I just put a center punch, the same as you vent your tire. And I put this on the end. I'll show you now, but I do it afterwards. Just clip it over that and then put that over the top end needle and it doesn't get in the way of anything. But obviously I'll put the air filter on, but you get a nice return from it. And as it beds in, it gets smoother anyway. And there's no metallic or anything like that's gonna affect anything else. So I'll take that off for the minute. You can see it fits well. And pops on there quite well. So it's a little tip for you there. Easy to make. And if you want it to make stronger, you can put an extra hole in there as well. So once we've done that, 
we get onto the air filter. As I say in blue Peter, here's one I've prepared earlier. I've super glued the inside of that and put a nice zip tie fitting around that. I always put the knot at the top because the fuel line's gonna run through there. You don't want the knot rubbing against the fuel line. And the same when you put this on. So I'll take this off. With your air filter, you always you should always pre-soak them 24 at least 24 hours before so that all the release agent has come out of the filter. This one's been soaking. Uh, always use a good filter oil like the uh, the Reds filter oil that they sell now and the Kyosho filter oil that they sell now. So make sure that you just get any more residue so that it looks evenly coated when you look at it. There's no sort of speckled parts or anything like that. Everything looks good. You can see there's a nice, nice webbing. And that's what you want to look for. This is what traps all the dirt and stops your engine wearing away. Don't wash the filter out. You throw it away because for the expense of that, I know the air filters are expensive, but how much is your engine? One piece of dirt and your engine's ruined. So once you've got that, what I do is just a, as a secondary safety filter feature. So I get some white tacky grease and just apply that around the outside. You can see it's quite sticky as well. So that just catches any dirt if, if it gets pulled apart or away from the air filter in over heavy jumping or impact and some dirt could be sucked in. So it's just an extra precaution. So you just slide that on your air. Make sure it's all seated nicely. Make sure you've got these two top lips at the top. So this keeps a little air space away from your body. That's how you know you got it the right way up and you got it the same way as the Kyosho writing. Clip that into position. Put your two screws in. Set your torque setting if you've got a Hitachi driver to one and this is the perfect setting for this. When they're new, it can be a bit tight, but once they get bedded in, and it doesn't over tighten, it sets it perfectly. Make sure all the air filters nicely, you can see that's nice and tacky now against there. Good seal against there, so you're drawing air through there and not through the sides. And that's a nice fit in there. So you take your, take your top cap off. A bit tricky at first but I don't like using any oil on this really I much rather it a dry seal just take your time with it once it's on it it'll go over all nicely there you go make sure it's sitting down nice right away to the bottom Get that in a nice position like that. And then you can adjust your mount on your MP10. You can flick it one way or the other, it's how you want it. So you want that about there. Get your zip tie. You want the knot at the bottom because your fuel line's gonna go around the back. Or I do it like that. So your, your fuel line's gonna go around the back. Make sure that's sitting in between the two rubber marks. Make sure it's all, all the way evenly around there. Push it down with your thumb. Get your pliers. Don't overstretch it, but a nice good seal. Good pull on it. And then just cut downwards. Make sure it's all flush, no sharp edges on your zip tie. And the same with this one at the top. Just flush that off. That's your engine ready to go. A little tip for you here as well, when you take these off, keep these in your bag because they're useful. You don't want any dirt going in. So put your nipple cap in there, that one in there, and it keeps everything together. And just put it in the bag. So when you service your engine, you take it apart. Then we go on to the X1 exhaust and tune pipe. What I do with that, 
I'm using the uh, medium manifold X1. Uh, X1's quite a handy pipe because you haven't got no rubber seal joining now, so you won't get any air pressure leakages where you have to check on the other pipes where you um, the rubber seal's not leaking, so you get an uneven pressure. Comes in a nicely packaged bag, full protection, two springs and a grub screw. We're using the, with this engine seems to do for good run time. You should be able to get eight and a half minutes straight out of the box. And then as the engine beds in after two, three liters, you should be getting nine and a half minutes, no problem. Uh, so we're using the 2143 torque one. So it gives it a little bit of bottom end power as well with a longer, slightly longer manifold on this one. So just take that off. A little bit of spit around there. Make sure it's a good fitting. You'll notice with the um, scooter rear pipe, the manifold has a cut out now because the head sits a little bit lower. So this is the difference when people saying about different size. It's not a different size in the inner aperture. It's, the, um, it's just this cut out and the top and the bottom. And the good thing with the new manifolds, you can take the back plate off without um, taking the manifold off. So you get your two exhaust springs. So I put the bottom spring on, get your hook, try not to overstretch it, just line the hole up with the pin, and it's easy with a hook. Just lay that down so it sits neatly. Repeat the uh, process again. Don't forget your little grub screw in the end as well. Don't overstretch. Top hole, easy. Click it down into the fin. Make sure it's nice. Nice seat and nice there. Put your grub screw in there sometimes you get a little bit of um, the soap in here so what i do is i i push it all the way through do it all the way to the end just to make sure you've got no soap in there and then back it off but most of them are pretty clear but it's like the polishing soap you might find some in there. As you can see, as I said, a little bit of polishing soap in there. That clears that out. So once you've done that, you can put your uh, return spring or rubber back on. So clip it over there. Easy to do. Push that down around there. And it's not getting in, in the way of your fuel tubing or anything like that. And you get a nice return. That's what you want when you're shutting the carburetor down. And there you have your nice scooter rear engine, all ready to go in your MP10. And this is the part number for the screw with the, the cap screw with the washer. It's 1-S23006F. Six is the length, so you can get it an eight mil. An eight mil will work, but I like the six mil. It's a bit safer. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and find it helpful.